Brian Murray, and normally at this time of the year, right around Thanksgiving, I'm typically having a pie appreciation party um, where uh, my clients and those who have supported my business come and they pick up a pie and we have a glass of wine, or I drop the pie off to their house, just as my way of uh, showing some appreciation to what you do to support my business and as a way for me just to express uh, some gratitude as well. However, in these times uh, with the pandemic, the uh, pie appreciation party has been canceled for this year, um, replaced. So uh, I don't know if people are really getting together in large groups where the pies that, if you've known, if you've gotten one of the pies, they're usually about four or five pounds, they feed an army. So I'm not sure if people are getting together. So this year I'm doing something a little bit different and I'm delivering a, a great bottle, you should already have it, of this uh, rosé. Small batch artisanal uh, rosé from Italy. Uh, my importer here in the Hoboken area, uh, you know, he, he goes to these little vineyards where this particular wine, they only made 6,000 bottles of it uh, for, this, for last year, and it goes great with turkey. So he recommended that it goes great with turkey. I probably have only drank, uh, you know, two or three cases of this myself, and I actually own about 1% of all the bottles of this rosé that they make. Uh, that's how much I believe in it. So the rest of this video is gonna be the importer and the grower telling you a little bit about the region, a little bit about the wine. Thank you again, and have a very happy Thanksgiving, and I do appreciate um, your support from the bottom of my heart. So now we're going to move on to another region in Italy. This is called Abruzzo. Now Abruzzo uh, is found in South Central Italy in this area right here. And I'm going to go back to this slide. Abruzzo is uh, considered the greenest region in all of Europe. I mean, that's, that's a big statement. And the reason they call it the greenest uh, region in Europe is because there are more nationally protected parks um, in the Abruzzo region than anywhere else in Italy and Europe for that matter. It's a beautiful, naturesque uh, region full of mountains, as you can see in this picture, and it also enjoys the Adriatic coastline as well. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to a little a beach side town called Francavilla al Mare. Now, Francavilla al Mare has a long history, but its name, Francavilla, comes from ancient Roman times because Franca means free and Villa means village uh, in Italian. And so it literally means free village at the sea, al mare. And the Romans called it that because they made this town a tax-free area. So um, people used to go there for vacations and they would avoid paying taxes. And people also lived there and, uh, to avoid taxes as well. I forget for how long it went on like that. I, if my memory uh, is correct, it was about 12 years or so, but the name stuck forever and ever. I wanna introduce to you uh, a talented winemaker. His name is Emilio Rapino, and he's a native of Francavilla al Mare. Uh, his family has been living in this uh, beachside uh, territory for multiple generations. And he's uh, not the first uh, person in his family to be making wine, but he is the first certified enologist to be making wine in his family. And, and so his family is very well respected locally for making really, really good wines. But Emilio wanted to sort of take it to the next level. And so he basically partitioned off several single vineyards on his family land to produce uh, single vineyard wines of, of super high quality, okay? And what I admire about Emilio is that not only does he make the wine and he's the owner of the winery, but he's not afraid to get his hands dirty. As you can see in this picture on the right, 
he gets out and he works in the vineyards with his bare hands every day, you know, training the vines, you know, getting dirt under his nails. Um, he's a, he's a hardcore, passionate Italian winemaker, and he's got a lot of skin in the game. And I really respect uh, what he does. His vineyards are uniquely uh, located. As you can see here, one of his plots faces the Adriatic Sea, which not only is uh, a beautiful, beautiful view, but it impacts uh, the quality of the wine. It really does pick up a lot of uh, minerality and salt from the, uh, the Adriatic Sea, which is so, so beautiful to taste, especially in his white wines. And then on the right here, you can see uh, facing west are the Apennine Mountains. Uh, so um, he's uh, uniquely located between the sea and the mountains. And that unique location uh, under the right hands produces a unique uh, group of wines. And so this is our daring pairing for the fall season. And I highly recommend that you try drinking a rosé with turkey. I love drinking rosé with turkey. Uh, because for me, turkey is sort of a bland uh, meat. I'm sure a lot of you would agree. And that's why there's just so many toppings available. But let's just say you don't want to deal with the toppings other than salt, pepper, maybe some herbs, and avoid the cranberry sauce and all that other crazy stuff for Thanksgiving. The rosé, especially Emilio's rosé, uh, will definitely add a lot of color and excitement to an otherwise sort of bland uh, turkey dinner. So I paired this rosé with a, a turkey breast uh, oven roasted with, with some herbs. Now, this uh, a wine type is called Cerasuolo d'Abruzzo, which literally means pink from Abruzzo. And this is the local rosé in the Abruzzo region. It's such an important uh, rosé in the world of Italian wine that it has its own appellation. It has its own DOC status, um, which was recognized by the Italian government. So while rosés are made all over Italy, uh, some of the best rosés coming out of Italy uh, are from the Abruzzo region. The other region that I'd recommend rosés is Puglia. They also have uh, their own appellations, a couple of them for their rosés. But um, Cerasuolo d'Abruzzo tends to be a, a medium, medium plus bodied rosé. It's not like those Provence uh, light bodied minerality based uh, rosés. Those I would not necessarily recommend with a turkey. They wouldn't have enough weight uh, to uh, balance itself with a turkey breast. This wine absolutely will. Um, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, even if you're not a rosé drinker, if you're a strict red wine drinker, I want you to, to know something about this rosé because I'm predominantly a red wine drinker too. Um, I'm not a big rosé fan, but uh, what makes this wine unique uh, is this. Have you ever heard of a wine called Monte Pulciano d'Abruzzo? Now, Monte Pulciano d'Abruzzo is probably one of the most famous uh, and cost-efficient wines coming out of Italy. It, it's in every liquor store. It's in every Italian restaurant. Monte Pulciano d'Abruzzo is everywhere. It's a very, very famous wine. Well, Monte Pulciano is a grape uh, that's grown in the Abruzzo region and makes red wine. But this rosé is made with the same grape, Monte Pulciano. The only difference is how long the juice stays in contact with the skin. That's it. So when you're, um, when you're fermenting the rosé, the skin stays in contact with the wine for about 12 hours at the most. I know that this is what Emilio does with his wine, 12 hours. Now, if he wants to make a red wine, he's gonna, he's gonna keep that skin contact going for probably at least eight days, just to give you a perspective. So what this really is essentially, this rosé, it's essentially a light-bodied red wine when you think about it. 
that's being made with a single red varietal that's typically made into a dry full body red wine. Okay. So uh, for those of you who are red wine drinkers, um, this is definitely uh, something you need to check out. Mm -hmm.